It all starts with General Stridum paying a visit to Baki Hanma. The general asks the boy what he thinks is the strongest animal on earth. Baki names a couple of animals, but none of his answers seem to please the general. Stridum tells him to think harder, to try and figure out the strongest and most dangerous animal that has ever existed in human history. Baki finally gets it, and says that looking at things that way it definitely has to be the T-Rex. Stridham confirms he's right, and shows Baki the newspaper. The boy can't read it because it's in English, but he manages to understand that day's headline. The first part showed the image of a primitive man who had been discovered after millions of years of remaining frozen deep within the earth. Somewhere in the United States a group of scientists found a body in perfect condition. The specimen was frozen in some kind of mineral, and had managed to remain intact all this time. The body belonged to a caveman who had lived during the dinosaur era. This primitive man had lived in the wildest era of Earth, yet he was not prey. He was the ultimate predator as the body of a giant T-Rex that was apparently being hunted by the caveman was found next to him. The thing is, this news caused such a stir that the military had to step in. They took the caveman to a secret base where they took care of him and named him Pickle. To revive the caveman, scientists had to recreate the exact climate conditions from millions of years ago. However, what really brought Pickle back to life was the smell of T-Rex meat. One of the scientists taking care of Pickle decided to taste the meat, not anticipating that the smell alone would be enough to rouse the caveman from his deep sleep. Pickle regained consciousness and, as expected, started causing a ruckus within the facilities. No one could stop the caveman, so the army had to use force. They tried to use a robotic suit of armor to subdue Pickle, but the caveman tore apart this machine, proving that they couldn't defeat him with brute force. They could have used more powerful weapons, but their intention wasn't to eliminate Pickle, as he was considered the greatest discovery of the century, and had now become a sort of global treasure. Later, General Stridum arrived on the scene and began to slowly remove his uniform, wanting to offer his friendship to Pickle. The caveman didn't understand the general's words, but he got the idea when Stridum told him he would take him to a place where he would feel at home. Clearly, Stridum was referring to the underground arena in Tokyo. All of this had happened before Stridum went to visit Baki. So now we return to the present, where the two of them continue their conversation. At that moment, Pickle's arrival in Japan starts being broadcast on TV. The caveman was escorted by several soldiers, and a group of journalists were waiting for him, wanting to get close, but the soldiers kept them at a distance. One of the media outlets present asked one of the reporters to approach the caveman to ask him a couple of questions. They wanted to be the first to have words from the primitive man. This was clearly a bad idea, as Pickle couldn't control his animal nature, and did what nobody expected. Pickle pounced on the reporter and unleashed his wild instincts on her. He recognized the scent of the reporter and immediately knew she was a female. This shocked everyone present, but no one dared to do anything. The soldiers tried to stop Pickle, but all their efforts were in vain. They hit him from all sides, but it didn't even tickle the caveman. After showing his wild nature, Pickle simply laid down and fell asleep as if nothing had happened. Everyone in Japan witnessed this shocking moment Baki also saw it and was shocked by such a situation happening on national television. The scene with Pickle and the reporter was a bit different from the manga, but I wouldn't say it was censored. Just a few panels were omitted, but it's not something that affected the scene. I think we all understood what happened. After that awkward moment, the Japanese people began to question whether Pickle should be treated as a human or as a beast. As this was happening, the soldiers took him to a military base to keep him away from civilians. That same night, a group of protesters gathered outside the facility, demanding that the cavemen be put in jail. However, both the protesters and the soldiers fell into total silence when the ogre, Yujiro Hama, suddenly showed up. The ogre appeared in front of the soldiers and asked them to step aside and let him through. At first, the soldiers refused, but they became so frightened that they started hitting each other. Yujiro told them they made the right decision and proceeded to enter the military base. As expected, other fighters from the underground arena arrived at the location intending to meet the prehistoric caveman. Retsu was eager to meet the specimen, who was undoubtedly very strong. The Kenpo master infiltrated the facility using the shadow technique. With this technique, he was able to mimic the movements of a soldier to the point where he became invisible. What Retsu did not expect was that he was not the only man who had thought about invading the facility. Dopo and Katsumi had also arrived at the location. Jack Hanma and other fighters also showed up. Those present began arguing about who should be the first to fight the caveman, but they could not come to an agreement. Jack woke up Pickle and made him leave the tree where he was sleeping. The caveman came out and, not understanding what was happening, just watched everyone present at the location. 
In the middle of their argument, they were all astonished to see that Yujiro was also there. The ogre entered unseen and stood watching them in silence for a while. But after a bit, he decided to join them. Katsuma wanted to look cool and confronted Yujiro, but the ogre humiliated him by taking off his shoelaces in less than a second. He also told him that the reason no one wanted him around was that he always acted impulsively. Yujiro told him that the only reason he attacked him is because he knew the others present wouldn't let him die. I think he was right about this part, as Katsumi was actually scared to death when he decided to attack him. He did it because he knew that if Yujiro decided to get serious, his father Dopo would step in to calm things down. Well, after that lesson in humility, all Katsumi could do was stand there in utter helplessness. Yujiro continues on his way and tells the others to stand back as he will be the first to test Pickle's strength. The ogre refuses to use the key to the door and effortlessly breaks the fortified glass barrier that kept Pickle captive. The funny thing about this is that Yujiro only lost his shirt when he really should have also lost his pants. But well, this is Baki, and I guess Yujiro's pants were made of some super resistant material or something like that. The caveman didn't know what was going on, but he got excited when he felt Yujiro's power. The ogre extends his fist to him and tells him that since he seems to not understand his language, he will make him feel his emotions through force. The two collided fists and compete to see who will knock the other down. The caveman felt Yujiro's strength and compared it to one of the most dangerous creatures he had faced in the past. Yujiro is surprised that Pickle could match his strength, so he used some kind of technique to knock him down. It's funny because Yujiro seems to admit that Pickle forced him to make that move. It's as if things had gotten complicated for Yujiro, and he didn't want the others to see that Pickle was capable of rivaling his brute strength. It was like he used a desperate move to get out of the situation. Yujiro was very surprised to see that Pickle was an extremely strong fighter, although he lacked martial arts. In my opinion, Yujiro realized that Pickle had no knowledge of martial arts, and therefore it wouldn't be fun to fight him at this time, so he decided to leave this fight for another day. Perhaps he was hoping that the other fighters would teach Pickle the way humans of this era fight. Retsu and the others were very intrigued to know what Pickle was capable of, and wanted to fight him right there. But just then the army arrived on the scene and forced everyone to leave the place. Dopo and the others had no choice but to obey military orders. Yujiro came out on behalf of everyone and told one of the soldiers that he was going to leave, but under the condition that they let all the others who were inside go free. Since no one could oppose the ogre's word, they had no choice but to accept his conditions. Well, by the end of the night, all the underground arena fighters were escorted out of the place in an army van. After this peculiar encounter, Pickle was taken to the underground arena, where Michinari tried to feed him however, Pickle would only eat creatures that attacked him first, so it was very difficult to please him. Meanwhile, the underground arena fighters had only one goal, to fight against the caveman to test his strength. Baki did not seem very interested in fighting with Pickle, he remained focused on getting stronger to defeat his father, so he decided to seek the help of his friend Retsu. Unfortunately for Baki, Retsu didn't want to help him with his training, as he was more focused on fighting against Pickle. The master of Kenpo was obsessed with testing his strength against Pickle, and could not think of anything else. Finally, Retsu decided to visit Mitsunari, and told him that he didn't care about being Pickle's food, but please let him fight with him. The old man was not sure whether to accept this request. However, after a few moments he agreed and the fight was arranged. The encounter between these two fighters was to take place in the underground arena. The only detail is that there was not going to be any audience present. The fight was observed only by Mitsunari, General Stridham, and Dr. Albert Payne. The fight started quickly, and Retsu attacked Pickle with all his techniques. The difference in physical strength was very noticeable. However, the Kenpo master continued attacking, not giving the caveman time to breathe. He knew he could not defeat him with physical strength, so he decided to use all the tricks and techniques he knew. Retsu continued attacking for a while, however Pickle took no damage and, with a quick move, managed to bite his shoulder with his large fangs. Pickle was practically eating Retsu, while Stridham and the others watched from the stands. This fight was very interesting because after some time of fighting, Retsu realized that he had no chance of winning. Chinese martial arts were not effective against Pickle. This hurt Retsu's pride, and it drove him to the point that he began to throw random punches. He was no longer using martial arts, he was simply trying to survive. According to his own words, he preferred to lose this way than to see martial arts being humiliated in this way. The truth is that the weight Retsu carried was huge, and it is understandable that he had this breakdown in the middle of the fight. He was carrying 4,000 years of martial arts, and now suddenly a primitive man was mocking him. This was unforgivable. 
Goretsu attacked with a move that was mostly used by children. The windmill attack, which basically were random punches. This was such a shameful spectacle that even Pickle felt sorry for Retsu, and stopped seeing him as a threat, which is why he wasn't even defending himself. Finally, Retsu realized he was making a serious mistake by abandoning Kenpo and regained his will to fight, when he realized that his body was moving on its own. Perhaps he had abandoned martial arts, however martial arts never abandoned him. But even though he fought with everything he had, Pickle knocked him out with a powerful attack, and demonstrated that martial arts would not be enough to defeat the Jurassic Predator. Pickle was ready to claim his food, but just at that moment, Mitsunari appeared in an attempt to stop him. Clearly, this did nothing as Pickle sent him flying the slap. The caveman began to eat, but before he knew it, Dr. Payne injected him with a powerful substance that put him to sleep. It should be mentioned that it was the same substance with which they defeated Yujiro during the maximum tournament. It was a chemical capable of putting a blue whale to sleep. After the fight, Retsu was taken to the hospital where his wounds were treated, but upon waking up he realizes that he has lost a leg. He began to feel depressed since not only did he lose, but also the Chinese martial arts were defeated. At that moment, Baki entered the room to greet Retsu. The two talked for a while, and in the end Baki managed to lift Retsu's spirits, who was very depressed after his defeat. Retsu was in a great dilemma, as the 4,000 years of Chinese martial arts meant nothing against the caveman. However, Baki managed to make him regain the desire to continue practicing Kenpo. It is at this moment where Baki also feels deeply excited to meet Pickle. This was a rival who did not fight to demonstrate his strength. He was a man who fought for his own survival. After the fight, Pickle breaks down the doors that held him captive and decides to go for a walk around the city. A poor guy walking the city streets had the bad luck of running into the caveman since he attacked him by surprise and stole the clothes he was wearing to wear them himself. The clothes were tight, however he looked good in them. Everything is unknown to him. Pickle can't believe there are no dinosaurs inhabiting the earth anymore. Despite that, he is excited to explore this new world. Just as he was walking in the middle of a street, he is hit by a truck. But to the surprise of passersby, this did not cause him any damage. In fact, it made him angry, and he lashed out against the vehicle to destroy it with his own hands. In fact, luckily for him, the truck had a large amount of meat inside, so it was a feast for him. Something to mention is that Katsumi had asked all his students to go look for Pickle, since he planned to take revenge for what he had done to Retsu. One of Katsumi's students tried to take him with him to the dojo, but just at that moment, Hanayama appeared. The indestructible Hanayama arrived accompanied by his gang to try to stop Pickle. This was to give Baki time to get to the place. Hanayama and Pickle had a brief confrontation. Pickle tried to tackle Hanayama thinking he was going to take him down easily. But to his surprise, it was like crashing into a huge concrete wall. The caveman compared Hanayama's strength to that of a Triceratops, one of the strongest dinosaurs of the prehistoric era. It wasn't a long fight, but at least we could see that Hanayama could rival Pickle's brute strength. Finally, Baki arrived at the scene and couldn't contain himself anymore. He wanted to fight right there. Surprisingly, the caveman did something curious as he seemed to have asked Baki to accompany him somewhere. The boy agrees and together with Hanayama, they accompanied him to the underground arena as that was the place that Pickle considered his home. Here something happens that shocked Hanayama and Mitsunari, as Baki began to talk to Pickle, and it seemed that the caveman was understanding what Baki was saying. However, while Baki was talking, Pickle suddenly attacked him with a powerful kick. The kick was so strong that Baki flew several meters and fell in the stands of the Colosseum. In the end, the fight didn't take place because Baki was knocked out after that attack. This was one of the greatest humiliations Baki has ever suffered because he let his guard down and suffered the consequences. Pickle began to dance in the middle of the arena. It seemed as if he was mocking Baki. The truth is that Pickle is smarter than Baki, and the others thought. He was slowly adapting to this modern world. The one who wasn't so lucky was Katsumi, as when he arrived at the place, Pickle had already left with Baki. I didn't mention it, but before this happened, Katsumi had a small confrontation with his father at the dojo. Dopo had arrived to try to prevent his son from fighting Pickle, because he considered this opponent was too strong for Katsumi. We could say that Dopo was just a worried father, and forgot that Katsumi was one of the most skilled fighters in the entire Baki universe. In the end, they were going to solve this problem with a fight. However, Katsumi got ahead, and managed to take Dopo out of combat with a single blow. Mitsunari went to visit Yujiro, and told him what had happened to Baki. The ogre became angry when he found out that Baki had been defeated with a single blow. He says that the boy has no excuses, and it's not the first time he has been defeated due to his overconfidence. But despite that, he says he's sure that Baki won't sleep for long, and will surely seek revenge for that humiliation. After all, Hema blood runs through his veins. 
And well, now Katsumi was the next fighter to face the caveman. During a few moments of this season, they showed us Katsumi's process in his search for the ultimate blow. In this part of the story, Itagaki gives this character some prominence. In one chapter, we were able to learn the origin of Katsumi. We found out that he worked in a circus with his parents in his native China. Unfortunately, his biological father died in the circus, and it was at that moment where Dopo offered his mother a sum of money for little Katsumi. That's how he became the son of the great Dopo Orochi. Dopo knew about this boy's abilities and trained him until he became his worthy successor. The most beautiful part in these episodes was when Katsumi's biological mother appeared in contrary to what everyone thought. Katsumi hugged his mother and told her that he still loved her as he always had. Contrary to harboring resentment for his biological mother, Katsumi is happy because in reality, he now has two mothers. I love that he has matured a lot since his fight with Hanayama. Now he is not as arrogant as before and shows that he has evolved a lot over time. Before his fight with Pickle, Katsumi trained until he mastered the whip strike, with which he is capable of breaking the sound barrier. In fact, it's Kakukayo who helps him master this technique after a request for Retsu. The secret of this technique was to imagine that the body is made up of hundreds of joints, like a real whip. On the other hand, Baki continued his own training, and this time his rival was a T-Rex, that he had manifested with the power of imagination. It's always seemed like a funny technique to me, but the truth is that it's still better than training while you're asleep. Here at least your body moves, and it's somewhat justified. Finally, the day of the fight arrived. When I made the video talking about Pickle's arc in the manga, I said the fight had been in the underground arena, but it actually wasn't like that. The fight took place in a baseball stadium. The stadium was packed with thousands and thousands of members of the Shin Shin Kai Dojo. Everyone had come to support Katsumi. Baki had also come to watch the fight. Retsu and Kaku couldn't miss this show either. And as expected, Dopo had also come to watch his son Katsumi face the toughest opponent of his life. The fight started the moment Katsumi entered the arena. The young fighter started attacking with all his repertoire from the beginning. He landed several blows on the caveman's body in a couple of seconds, but obviously this was not going to be enough to bring him down. Pickle returned to the attack, but Katsumi moved faster and hit him with the blow that could break the sound barrier. It seemed that this time the caveman felt real pain. Pickle associated this pain with that caused by a T-Rex tail strike. At that moment he stopped seeing Katsumi as a toy and now saw him as his prey. This technique was very powerful, but had serious consequences for Katsumi as his hands began to break with every blow he gave. Even military fighter jets had trouble when they broke the sound barrier so it was expected that the human body would not withstand this impact. Despite this, he did not give up and in his next attack he used one of his legs to continue attacking. Katsumi imagined that his body had thousands of joints and this made him think that his body was as flexible as a whip. The truth was that this was not the case and with every blow he gave, his body suffered significant damage. Katsumi's blows were so powerful that a loud sound could be heard throughout the arena. Baki praised Katsumi's skills and acknowledged that he had become too strong since the last time he saw him in action. Pickle began to adapt to Katsumi's blows and it seemed as if these powerful attacks were no longer hurting him. Despite this, Katsumi kept using the same technique over and over again regardless of the consequences. At that moment his hands and one of his legs were in very bad shape after using that technique many times. Katsumi was desperate to beat Pickle, so he didn't mind sacrificing his injured arm and used his most powerful strike, the whip strike. That strike was so powerful that it managed to knock down Pickle. However, Katsumi shattered his own arm in the process. The reality is that what caused this damage was not Pickle's body, but the power of the sound barrier. Before touching Pickle, Katsumi's hand broke the sound barrier at a speed that only military aircraft have managed to surpass. Obviously, the human body would crumble if it crashed into that invisible wall at high speed. Everyone in the stadium celebrated their master's victory. Katsumi was proud of himself as this victory placed him above men like Retsu. He was no longer in the shadow of his father Dopo. However, the joy was short-lived for Katsumi as he realized that Pickle was simply sleeping and had not actually been defeated yet. Katsumi smiles and as he had no strength left to fight he says he is willing to give his life to Pickle as he had promised from the beginning and was not going to break his promise. He tells Pickle it's time to end this, so he hopes to be good food for him. The caveman goes on the attack and using his powerful jaws takes Katsumi's right arm as if it were his trophy. In tears, the caveman holds Katsumi's arm between his teeth as he now considers him a worthy opponent after fighting with him. Mitsuneri tried to knock out Pickle with the same darts that had put him to sleep on previous occasions however, Dopo stops him before giving the order. 
Dopo says that doing that would be disrespectful to his son, as he agreed to be eaten by Pickle, and his decision should be respected. Fortunately, Pickle decides not to devour Katsuman, and keeps his arm as a trophy. This moment is taken advantage of by the paramedics who take Katsumi out of the arena and transfer him to the nearest hospital. This fight is one of my favorites because it showed us the great development that Katsumi had, even Baki recognized him as a formidable fighter. From being a spoiled child he became a respectable man. He is undoubtedly one of my favorite characters in the series. Later Dopo and Yujiro talk in a bar. They both drink beer as Dopo tells Yujiro, how bad he feels for almost losing his son Katsumi. He was so happy to see him become a martial arts master that he forgot he was his only son. They both talk for a while and discuss how amazing it's that a creature like Pickle is alive in this era and how lucky they are to see him with their own eyes. Both of them reach the same conclusion that this occurrence couldn't have been pure luck. They speculate that a higher power, akin to a divine force, might have intervened as the odds of it happening purely by chance seem statistically impossible. Baki was preparing to fight Pickle. Retsu was accompanying him in his training and told him that they just needed to set a date for the fight to be official. However, while they were thinking about the preparations for the fight, Baki received a call from Mitsuneri informing him that the fight was not going to be able to take place as someone else had beaten them to it. Jack Hanma didn't want to wait any longer, so he stormed into the underground arena while Pickle was resting. Jack came to face Pickle, not caring that the cavemen had recently had a fight. The arena was closed and there was no one watching. Only Mitsuneri was present and that's why he called Baki to inform him about the situation. Jack tells Pickle that he surely won't understand his words, however, he will make him understand with his fists. Pickle was excited by Jack's presence and agrees to fight him. Jack's presence made him excited. This was the biggest man he had seen in this era, and it reminded him of the fiercest rivals he had faced in the past. Both fighters attack and collide in the center of the arena. Jack wanted to see which jaw was the strongest in history. This was a biting competition. Jack and Pickle were biting each other's face at the same time, but only the one with the strongest teeth will win. Pickle manages to lift Jack with the strength of his jaw, and with a couple of quick moves sends him flying in the process, rips off part of his face. Jack was in shock, and surely felt immense pain after suffering that injury. But despite this, he immediately got up and delivered a powerful punch to Pickle's chin. The punch was so strong that the caveman was sent flying through the air. Jack realized that this punch did nothing to Pickle as his neck was too thick, and thanks to this, he withstood the impact. The feeling was as if his brain hadn't moved at all, even though he had hit him with all his strength. Baki and Retsu arrived, just as the fight was developing. Baki was so frustrated because everyone had stolen his chance to fight with Pickle. But despite this, he arrived at the scene to see if his brother was capable of defeating the caveman. Jack took the advantage for a few seconds and hit Pickle, without giving him a chance to defend himself. He was so furious because Pickle had stolen part of his face, so, he wanted to get revenge by eating Pickle's ear. The caveman got so furious that he started acting very strangely. Jack tried to attack, but realized that his fist did not reach Pickle. It was as if he had dodged it in less than a second. Jack was in shock because this seemed impossible to him. The caveman increased his strength and speed in a matter of seconds. Now he was far superior to Jack. What was happening was that Pickle had actually dodged the punch with great speed, and had also taken advantage of that same momentum to return to the same place in a fraction of a second. Jack put all his strength into the next attack, and even asked God to help him win this fight. But despite Jack's efforts, the caveman moved faster and surprised him with three powerful blows. The blows were so fast that they occurred before Jack even hit the ground. Finally Jack was knocked out, and the caveman claimed victory. Pickle started dancing to celebrate his victory, something he had been doing since he fought dinosaurs. Baki was determined to stop the fight to help his brother, but fortunately, Pickle decided not to attack and went to sit in a corner of the arena. Pickle sensed that if he approached, he would be in great danger. When he saw his opponent's body, he remembered that when he was a child, he ate a wasp, and when he was chewing it, the sting stung his tongue, and this caused him immense pain. The lesson Pickle learned is that some creatures remain dangerous even after they are defeated. And indeed that was the case. Jack was holding one last attack that we could see when Mitsuneri approached him. The attack consisted of attacking the enemy with his two middle fingers as soon as he got close. Luckily for the old man, he was very small and managed to avoid this attack. The fight ended with Pickle's victory and Jack being taken to the hospital. But despite his defeat, Jack was not going to accept this humiliation, so when he woke up, he went straight to ask Pickle for a rematch. Initially, Pickle was very scared and tried to run away from Jack, because he found it incomprehensible that this person had come back to life. 
Pickle had thought that Jack had left this world, so he was greatly frightened to see him return. However, the caveman also had his pride, so he agreed to face him once more. The second round didn't last long as Jack was weakened and was easy prey for Pickle, who quickly defeated him. It was his fighter's pride that made him stand up, but in reality his body was not in condition for another fight. After his second defeat, Jack was determined to face Pickle again, however, Baki stood in his way. Baki explained to Jack that this made no sense and asked him to please stop. Baki also told Jack that Pickle took him to the top of a building and hung him up like a trophy. This means that, unlike Retsu and Katsumi, Jack did not earn Pickle's respect. For the Cayman, Jack was just his food. These words made Jack scream in frustration. However, he finally understood the fight was over and he had lost. The truth is that I doubt very much that Jack would have survived a third fight, so we have Baki to thank for bringing him to his senses. The next day, Mitsunari tells Yujiro about this and asks him if he thinks Baki will have any chance against the prehistoric caveman. Yujiro says they are both very different, and Jack's defeat proves that his blood is not pure. Here we can see that Yujiro still does not consider Jack a worthy opponent. The fact that he has been defeated twice makes him feel ashamed of him, and it's not the first time something like this has happened to him. In fact, if we remember correctly, after losing to Baki in the Maximum Tournament, Jack went to pick a fight with Yujiro, and things didn't end well for him. The ogre is confident that Baki can win, but even if he can't, a defeat will only make him stronger because the blood running through his veins is purer than Jack's. After a couple of days, Baki finally decides to fight with Pickle. It was funny because Baki wanted the fight to be without an audience. In fact, he stayed in the arena for several days until Pickle felt like fighting. At first, Pickle didn't want to fight as his only motivation to fight was to get food. However, Baki was not willing to leave the arena until he had his long-awaited fight. The boy approached Pickle and gently touched his cheek. This was a way to provoke him. The caveman got so angry that his fighting instinct finally ignited, and now he was ready to fight. The only ones in the arena were Retsu, Hanayama, and Mitsunari. This fight was too long in the manga, and many considered it slow and boring. The truth is that the animated version surprised me a lot as at no point did it seem like a boring fight to me. I could say it's one of those times where the series surpassed the manga. At first Baki dominated most of the fight, as Pickle was not used to fighting against someone with a fighting style like Baki's. Pickle had to resort to a risky move to get rid of Baki. He took a leap and jumped several meters into the air. His intention was for Baki to receive the impact of the fall, and indeed it was. Baki absorbed the full force of that fall, and Pickle's weight only amplified the damage. Retsu and Hanayama were surprised to see him get up after that fall. But despite being in those conditions, Baki managed to knock out Pickle twice. He even used the whip blow and managed to cause a lot of damage to the hard body of the caveman. The most interesting part of the fight was when Baki managed to manifest a creature that was a combination of the strongest dinosaurs Pickle had ever faced. The caveman couldn't believe what he was seeing, and his only reaction was to be scared. Baki had total control of the fight, he could even easily dodge the attack that defeated Retsu. The caveman was forced to use techniques he had never used in his life. Baki was not an opponent he could beat using brute force which scared him. He didn't know how to face such a small and skillful opponent. Baki was humiliating him with his speed. Being bigger and stronger was useless if he couldn't land a single blow. An interesting thing is that here we could see that Pickle is capable of activating a type of power in which his body adopts an animal form. His bones and muscles transform to give him a more terrifying appearance. The scar on his chest was because at one time he was in the jaws of a T-Rex and managed to come out a lot. Now in his final form he intended to end this fight. Although in this state his strength increases, he is still unable to use martial arts techniques, which was a disadvantage since Baki countered each of his attacks with martial arts movements. Despite the notable difference in size and brute force, Baki was able to keep pace with Pickle in his final form. At the end of the fight, Baki made the same mistake as the first time and let his guard down. This was the first time that Pickle was fighting for pride and not for food, and it was also the first time he was afraid of losing a fight. Because of these feelings, the caveman knew that he couldn't win with strength alone. This was the first time that Pickle used a martial arts technique. The caveman grabbed Baki by the arm and threw him to the ground. The impact was so strong that Baki was left unconscious in the middle of the arena, which ended the fight, and Pickle emerged victorious. Baki's body was on the verge of collapsing from that fall he suffered at the beginning of the fight, so this new impact ended up knocking him unconscious. Baki was taken to the infirmary to be examined, but as expected, he got before the doctor could give him a diagnosis. On the other hand, Pickle went to observe the city from one of the tallest buildings. 
Baki arrived at the place and understood that Pickle was actually trying to see what was once his land. This made him empathize with him, and he told him that he could accompany him from time to time. Personally, I like this version of the fight more compared to what we saw in the manga. For some reason the fight in the manga felt a bit slow to me. I really liked how Netflix adapted it, and although it didn't have the best animation, the truth is the studio in charge of this season did not disappoint. In this season, we also got to see the scene in which the President of the United States swears peace to the ogre. Also at that meeting, the President asked Yujiro to turn a piece of coal into a diamond. Yujiro applied immense pressure to the coal, and managed to turn it into an artificial diamond, thus satisfying the whim of the new President of the United States. And at the end of this arc, the world's major governments conducted a worldwide vote, asking the population for their opinion on the future of the caveman. By a small margin, it was decided that Pickle should be frozen again, as he did not belong to this era. But luckily for everyone, Pickle was not willing to sleep again and escaped from the laboratory to live freely in this new world. As a show of his gratitude towards General Stratum, Pickle gifted him the head of the T-Rex, because he fulfilled the promise he made at the beginning, to take him to a place where he would feel at home. And well, I will say that this season met my expectations. It's something we have been waiting for a long time, and now we can finally say that the wait was worth it. Some scenes and lines of dialogue weren't included in the animation, but I don't believe this had a significant impact. Honestly, this season felt well-rounded and left a positive impression on me. The best part is that in a very short time, we will be able to see the second part of this season, where the Baki vs. Yujiro fight will finally take place. For now, this is the end of the video. Maybe after this, I'll make another video giving my overall opinion of this season, and also make a comparison between the animated version and the manga version. And well, friends, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked it. I hope you have a nice day or night. See you soon.